Hello and welcome to the OpenMX video tutorial series. In this video, we will be conducting a multiple regression analysis using OpenMX. On the left, you see a multiple regression equation for three predictor variables, x1, x2, and x3, and a single outcome variable, y. On the right is the path model for this equation. We have a path for the intercept term, b0, a path for each of our predictor variables and their effects, b1, b2, and b3. We also have our error term. In path analysis, we also model the means of our predictor variables, as well as their variances, and covariances. Now let's create this model in OpenMX. First, we load OpenMX with the library function. Then we read in our data. This data was generated by the model you see here. We can then inspect our data with the summary function. Notice now we have four variables, x1, x2, x3, and a single outcome variable, y. We then store the names of these variables into an object called manifests. Now we can create our multiple regression model. First we create an object called MyModel1. We give this MX model a name, simple regression, and it will be a RAM type model. We set manifest vars equal to the name of the manifest variables we set previously. Next we specify our A matrix. As we have four manifest variables, this matrix is a 4x4 four four matrix. The first column of this matrix represents the values of the single-headed arrows between x1 and itself, x2, x3, and y. As we are only concerned with modeling the relationship between x1 and y as a single-headed arrow, we only have a value there. We do the same for the x2 and x3 columns of this matrix. The names of the rows and columns of this matrix are just the manifest variable names which we set previously. And here we allow our paths of interest to be free and give them names, b1, b2, and b3. This is our A matrix. Next we specify our S matrix. This matrix is also a 4x4 four four matrix and represents the variances and covariances of our model. Here we are specifying variances to have a starting value of 0.8 and covariances to have a starting value of 0.6. Dim names are the same names as the A matrix. And we free this matrix and set labels as such, with variances on the diagonal and covariances on the off diagonal. This is our S matrix. Our filter matrix is just an identity matrix in this case because we have no latent variables. Next we estimate the means matrix for our data. Notice here I have labeled the mean of x1, x2, and x3 as mean x1, x2, and x3, but I have labeled the mean of y as b0. This is our M matrix. Next, we feed these four matrices into the MX expectation RAM function. And finally, we close our model with an MX data statement. Next, we can run this model and inspect our parameter estimates. It appears that we have estimated every parameter that we wanted to in our model. It also appears that our B parameters, our parameters of interest, are very close to the values found in the true model. Now we want to test the significances of these paths. We do this by creating submodels with each of the B parameters equal to zero. My model 2 is just like my model 1, except the B1 parameter is set to be zero. My model 3 has the B2 parameter set equal to zero. And my model 4 has the B3 parameter set equal to 0. We can also create a model which tests all of these parameters simultaneously by creating a model which sets all of these B parameters equal to 0. Let's run these new models. We can then compare these restricted models to our full model using an MX compare function. The first argument is our full model. And the second argument is a C function including all of our submodels. This will compare all of our submodels to our full model. By looking at this comparison table, we can see that our original model, which included all of the B parameters, is the best model to use for this data. Thanks for watching. 